children that might not know any different. They come in the room and they see it. They scratch their head. And you know what? Confusion. Did you know that the Bible says God is not the author of confusion? So when you confuse, an America is so confused. Talk to me. Yes, Lord. Oh my goodness. And then if even if somebody's not into the transgender mess or not into the lesbianism and all that craziness, but just plain out immorality. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. Nobody thinks anything of it anymore. So look, now he clarifies some things. I believe this whoever's at the computer back there, verse 18, I think is what's next. Noel verse the verse 8. Oh Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. Now, do I have verse 18 in the computer too? Sometimes I get too many things going on at one time. Maybe it wasn't verse 18. But look and see what it says. He says, Oh my God, incline thine ear and hear. Open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee. He said the problem is we're not praying. Here it is in big print. Oh my God, incline thine ear and hear open thine eyes and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousnesses. He said it's our own fault. We've not prayed. Supplication is another word for prayer. Amen. We've invited the problem. Folks, let me give you something. I want you to hear this and I'll move to the next point. Sin will not only defile you, sin will confuse your way of thinking. Amen. People that are caught up in the sin, they see nothing wrong with it. See, that mass murderer that everybody else sees as off the chain wicked, the mass murderer himself sees nothing wrong with him. The thief, you work hard, you've worked in the plant or you've worked on, on a construction job or whatever you do, and you've worked hard to have your money. And then for somebody just to come take it away from you, it, it bends us out of shape. But to them, they think they're entitled. They think it's okay. You know why? Because it will warp your way of thinking. The problem is sin. I've said this many times, and it's not original with me. Remember this. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. So we see first the confession. Then we see the confusion. And now let's see the condition. Verse 3 now on the screens please. Leave this up. And I will set my face unto the Lord God, comma, to seek by prayer and supplications, comma, with fasting and sackcloth, and ashes. The first thing right here that every American needs to understand. We need to quit looking to the government and look to the Lord. He said in the first part, part of the verse, I will I didn't set my face toward where I was going. To. <laughs> I will set my face unto the Lord God. Quit looking to the government for everything that you have and start looking to God. Because right. God can provide for you better than the government can. So first, we got to set our face toward the Lord God, which means quit looking to the government 
and look to God. Secondly, I see something else that we've already mentioned. Then we gotta get we started, we gotta start praying like we should. To seek by prayer and supplication. I quoted it a few moments ago, but pop up the next verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Amen. So first, we got to look to the Lord. Set your face toward God. Don't look to the government to meet your need. Look to God. Then we got to pray, realizing that 2 Chronicles 7.14 is a powerful verse that teaches us God will forgive your sin, heal your land, he'll bless you, and the touch of God be upon your land. It's not in politics, it's in God. And then thirdly, in that same verse we had up a moment ago, here's what it says. They did it with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Amen. That tells me they got serious Amen. about their praying. See, they didn't even put ashes on it. That was a symbol of being humble. See, you didn't go strutting around thinking you were the greatest thing it's ever been <laughs> with ashes all over you. <laughs> Talk to me. That's right. They'd purposely put ashes on them, take their fine clothes off, and put on sackcloth, and they'd go pray. That would prove to the God and everybody else around them they had humbled themselves. They knew they were nothing. They were nobody apart from God. And they got serious in trying to get in touch with heaven. Folks, I wonder how many of us are serious about America. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you why we're so messed up in our country right now. Let's take that thing back a few generations, okay? So, you know, these young people would think I'm totally ancient if I told this. But we went to school in public school. I never went to a private school or a Christian school one hour in my life. And in that public school, that teacher had no King James Bible on her desk. And it wasn't just one teacher. All the way through, we didn't have kindergarten back then. And I started with the first grade. I went all the way to the 12th grade and every morning there was a devotion and there was prayer. Amen. Some of y'all remember that. Amen. Well, let me tell you what. The church of Jesus Christ was sitting back goofing off and we let a woman named Madeline Murray O'Hare who was an atheist. She got the Supreme Court to go along with her and they expelled God from school. So when kids before, like in my generation, if they didn't get it at home, they'd get something from school. And Jeff hit on it a few minutes ago. His word will never return void or empty. If you get the word, it's going to do something. So even if they weren't raised in a Christian home, if they went to school, you got a little bit of the Word of God. Madeline Murray O'Hare had God expelled and had the Bible expelled. So they came up from these that are young adults now. They came up through a godless, let me rephrase it, an ungodly Amen. school system. Yeah. They don't know anything about right and wrong. They don't want to know anything about right and wrong. They live for the moment and for whatever pleasure that they think they can get right then and there. That's why nobody thinks anything. The things that are so appalling to us, they look at it and say, 
Wait a minute. That's confusion of faith. Amen. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. I remember 1969, I was watching when that lunar module was, some people don't believe they were on the moon yet. I, I'm not going to say yay or nay, but I was watching a black-white TV set, 1969. I saw them come out of that, and one small step for my man, a giant leap for mankind. He said, we could put a man on the moon. Now they don't even know which bathroom to go in. <laughs> They don't know whether they're a man or a woman. I like what a grandmother here at the church told me that her granddaughter said, oh, that's easy to figure out. That's easy to figure out. And I quoted Mark Robinson, the lieutenant governor from North Carolina. Man, he said a while back, he said, not but two genders. Amen. He said, I can see you reporters out there right now with your, ink, with your pencils touching to your lips. You want to, he said, get down every word I'm about to say. Yep. He said, you can go to the doctor and get cut up. Amen. You can go to the dress shop and get made up. Yep. You can go down there and get drugged up. But at the end of the day, you're nothing but a cut up, drugged up, made up man you cannot take away the DNA that God has put inside of you God did make a mistake you know what they hate him oh they hate him that's why I'm going to go campaign for him he's the lieutenant governor of North Carolina he went on to say this has no place in school. Two plus two does not equal transgender. Man, it was awesome. Man, it was good. But you know what? People are afraid of the liberal media. I like what that lieutenant governor said. He said, you want my head? Here it is. He said, come get it. It's right here. <laughs> he said, it's time for every adult, oh and especially every Christian, to stand up Amen. for what's right and against what's wrong. Amen. Forget about party politics. Just do what is right. I'm going to be up there tomorrow, and I don't care who sees me. I don't care who knows it. We haven't for all these years. I'm not going to worry about it now. Amen. Join us as we pray for America. Let's start tonight by personal confession and then national confession. Our Father God, I ask you to take these words that have been spoken and Lord, this is not something new that I preach for the first time tonight. Lord, our people here, they know this. Lord, we do need to be reminded and realize that there's a reason that we need to stand up. I'm reminded as young David went to the battlefield and his older brothers rebuked him. And David asked the question, is there not a cause? Lord, let us realize there is a cause. There's a reason we got to stand up for righteousness and against unrighteousness. Lord, we all love America, and I ask you to preserve it. And Lord, let us keep this republic of ours. And I just pray that we can make a difference in this country. Have your will and way. We ask it, our Father, in Jesus' name. Janet and Steve play for us. Would you stand? Every patriotic American.
that should be praying. It'd be great if we could help all of our church officers around the altar and others could join with us. coming Sunday is Mother's Day and they definitely didn't want to do anything on Mother's Day so the next Sunday, 15th day of May, we'll have the memorial service right here at the church at 3 that afternoon for Brother Richard Hammond. Also I had a note, I also spoke to Larry a few moments ago Miss Linda Thomason had passed early this morning so we want to add that to our list, which we will uh, for sure. On our regular prayer list, pray for Danny McAllister. Been in the hospital, but he's out and doing well. Johnny McGrath been in the hospital and, and uh, got out. Grace Finley had been in the hospital and uh, got out. Donnie Sullivan uh, up here running the camera. Also, Richard Payton hadn't been doing well. Bobby and Brenda Adams, Ann Bloom, Dan uh, Abernathy, Joan Lanavara, Johnny and Margaret Whitten, Cassidy Merritt and the Baby, Kana Keller, Wendell Fountain, Grayson Farthing, Juanita Button, Ron Rosa, Joe Bates, and Richard had put her on the prayer list recently, and uh, God has come through and answered it. Totally, she's a whole new person. I mean, God has stepped in in a mighty way. So that's a praise report. Uh, uh, Laura Shaw, Eddie Vickery, Tammy Ayers, Ben Brogdon, Gracie McRoby, Christy Whitten starts some chemo, I think, Friday, isn't it? And then Jeff Pike, Rodney Harris, Scotty Boggs, Dusty Merritt, uh, Phil Griffith, Mary Cornett, Siobhan Wilson's been in the hospital, Owen Adams, Mike Campbell, Gabriel Simpson, uh, the Ashley twins, that would be uh, Larry and Connie's uh, great grandbabies, Anna Grant, Jan Shadow, Kathy Miller, Dennis Littlejohn, Randy Perry is here somewhere. I, Saw him, uh, he's got some surgery. Then the sign-ins tonight, Sammy Davis, Betty McJunkin, 
Jessica Capps, Laura Kelly, Dwayne Fleming, Randy Bratcher, Dodge Smith, Dana Brock, Wanda Burdett, Marsha Dagnall, Ralph Partain, Susan Reeves, Richie Denise Tyler and Austin Fortune, Emma Compton, Carol Cool, David, and don't have a last name, but God knows all about that with a stage four situation. Butch and Jonathan Moore, Sandra Powell, Lisa Hart, Jerry Williams, uh, Christian Robertson or Roberson, I'm not sure, and that would be Sandra Lawrence's grandson, about 19 years old, is that a wreck? Did they live in Macon or was he just down there? Okay, in a hospital at Macon, and he's in intensive care and has a brain bleed. That's Sandra's 19-year-old grandson. Uh, Andy Bell, Emily Wright, Wanda Hart, uh, Annie Lee Blair, Donna Jackson, Etha, excuse me, Donna Anderson, Etha Jackson, Charles Irwin, George Bell, Joe Hall, Mark Strickland, Kate Stamps, Ray Johnson, uh, Joel Driver, uh, William Steele, and Eric Brogdon. And then the families in bereavement, the Hammond family, adding now the Thomason family, the McCurry, the Vickery, the Owen, the Alverson, the Armstrong, the Cartwright, the Selman and Edie families, and then the Partain family. And I've been asked to mention a very, very special but unspoken prayer request that God will know all about. What about if you have an unspoken, we'll give them to the Lord. Uh, Bible college students, if you listen up by tomorrow night, we can still meet in the fellowship hall for those that come early for coffee and some snacks and that type of thing. But at 7 o'clock, we're going to actually move out here into the auditorium for class just for tomorrow night. They've got that ladies' conference Friday night and Saturday morning, and they really need to get in and do some things in the fellowship hall. And so for tomorrow night, we can still meet in there. Some of us get here as early as 545. That's fine to go back there, make coffee like we do, and if there are any snacks, that's fine. But then at 7 o'clock, we will move out here, and some of the ladies are coming in to do some work in the fellowship hall. So class will be out here uh, for tomorrow night. So I just want to make you know about that. Join us if there's any way possible, 12 noon at the downtown courthouse. Richard Hudgens, brother, would you close us in prayer? God bless each of you, and may God's blessing be upon you. I have it by the Lord. I just want to thank you for the opportunity. Yes, God. Lord, to call upon your name, Lord, just to come back to your house. Thank you, Lord, for the words that we've heard tonight, God. I pray, God, that you just uh, bless our nation. Oh, uh, yes. Just uh, be with those who are on the prayer list, Lord, each one. You know each prayer need. God, I pray, Lord, that you just reach down and touch according to your precious will, Lord, and the ones by the graveside. God, I pray, Lord, that you just give them strength. Yes, Father. I want to thank you most of all for that precious blood that you shed on Calvary. Hey, Amen. Lord, yes. Thank you enough for that, Lord. Hey. Thank you. can thank you every day. Five times a day, Lord, but it won't be enough. Lord, just want to go with us and guide us and direct us, Lord, just help us live a life be pleasing to you. Yes. Ask all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Have a good week. May God bless you. Man, I like that on those screens. Look there and take a look at that. Amen. Ushers are at the door. It is missions tonight.